And my scriptures today are going to come from two of the main scriptures that I got out of this book, which is Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 13. And then we're going to read 2 Corinthians 3, verse, no, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians it's in second verse. Verse 3 through 5. Um, Amen. Romans chapter chapter 8, verse 5 through 3. 5 through 13 reads, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set for what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, or but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. But for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If by the spirit you put you put death, the, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, and you will live. Second Corinthians has made already quoted from Second Scripture from Second Corinthians. I cannot remember the chapter from another book. We're going to go with the verses. Verse 3 states, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight or fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, on the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments in every presentation. It sets itself up against the knowledge of God and taking to captivity every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Amen. 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 And so my title for today's message is Mighty Mental Warriors. Because that's what God wants us to be. As we're being attacked by the things of everyday life, we hear the people talking about us, talking down on us. You, you hear all the bad things that are going on in the world. As it comes and it gets and it goes into your mind, it goes into your spirit, and it starts to bring it down. But you got to fight past all of that. He wants you to be a mighty mental warrior to stand and be able to fight against the lies that the devil is trying to whisper into your head, whisper into your heart, whisper into your life. Because if you, if you don't stand and fight against it, you're going to start to believe it. Yeah. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right, right, right. So if you start to receive all the stuff, all the lies, because that's what they are, lies yeah. of the devil, that he is trying to speak into your life, right. you're going you're gonna to start to believe it and you think it, and that's what you're going to be. But God says, no, that's not what you are. You are mine. You are my child. Yeah. And, and if you are mine and my spirit lives in you, then you are guaranteed life as long as you walk according to my spirit. And Jesus, um, one of the main principles I got out of this book as I was reading it was that our actions are the direct results of our thoughts. If we have a negative mind, we will have a negative life. As I said, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, so a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And your heart is an organ. You know that when they're talking about heart, they're not talking about this, this, this flesh and the heart that's in your chest. They're talking about this heart, this heart. Because whatever you do, whatever you think, whatever you allow to go in it, it's going to eventually come out and flow to it, flow, flow out of it. And so, you have to make sure that what you allow to go into your head, what you allow to go into your heart, into your mind, 
is the things of Christ. Because if you don't, if you let stuff that's not of Christ come up in, it's going to take root. And when it takes root, it's going to just start to clutter up and make it dirty. And nobody wants to live in a dirty place. Yeah, yeah. You can't function. You can't hear what the Lord has to say to you. You can't do what God has for you to do with a dirty place, with a dirty, cluttered, filthy mind. You got to be able to just stand firm and say, no. I'm not what you said I am. I'm not what they said I am. I'm not what I used to. I may used to have been there, but that's not me. I'm not what I used to be. You can keep thinking and living in the past and remember what I used to be, but I'm going to focus on what God says that I am. I am his child. I'm a joint heir in Christ. That's who I am. And it don't matter what I used to do because once you accept Christ, you become a new creature. Amen. And another thing I got is that we must think about what we are thinking about. If we always think about the worst case scenario, how can we walk in faith with God? How can we walk with God in faith? Think about the things that you think about. It's like, how do you do that? If I'm thinking about it, of course I'm thinking about it. No. Have you ever just said and thought about some of the thoughts that come into your mind? You walk, you have a good day, and then somebody's bumping, they bump into you, and it's like, you should. Everybody know they've done it. Somebody goes, you should. And just that quick, your good vibe just kind of went to the side. And if you and if you let it you muster and fester in your heart, you're gonna keep getting angrier and angrier. Who do you think they is bumping into me? They don't know who I am. Why are you gonna bump into me like that? Can't they say, excuse me, did they mama teach them anything? Y'all know we do this. <laughs> Y'all know. It goes that way. I say you. Your spouse, not Sorry. your spouse, it's like your spouse does something that upsets you. It kind of irritates you. And you don't say anything. You're like, never mind. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to be the bigger Christian and just let it go. But you don't let it go. You keep thinking about it. Yeah. Thinking about it. First, just a little thought, then a bigger thought, then a bigger thought. And next thing you know, you can feel that anger rising up in you. That anger that, that just, boom, that malice toward you. You feel it rising up in you. Because you're thinking about that thing. But what we should do, instead of letting it fester in us, if they do something, you can talk to them. It's like, hey, baby, I wasn't too cool with what you did to me. I wasn't too cool with what you're saying. It's like, no offense and all, but that hurt my feelings. And that's, sometimes that's, the hardest, that's one of the hardest things for us to tell somebody is that they hurt our feelings. Because you're thinking, we, we, we want to hold on to it and say, I'm going to bring it back up. I don't need to talk about it now, but I'm going to bring it back up. When I'm, I'm going to hit it with it real good when we get that all of it. Bam! You remember when you did this? Bam! You remember when you did that? Bam! You remember when you did this? Remember when you said that? This is why I'm at it. This is blah, 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 blah. And it goes on and on and on and on. And it's like, wait, that happened three years ago. Let it go. Let it go. And... When, when, when we, in order to, to, to just kind of dispel those thoughts, that this is natural. We are human. We will have thoughts that come into our head that are not God-like. But when we have those thoughts come into our head, we have to do what Philippians 4 and 8 says. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, Think about such things. Whatever is pure, true, noble. Got a whole bunch of lovely, and think about those things. It's like, okay, that's easy to do. But how easy to do is it when you, 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 you're like, you're made in your mind, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about the good things. I'm going to think about what's pure, what's admirable, what's a price. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Bam! Somebody come up to you and it's just, something happened okay. and it throws you off track. How do you get back on track after that? Alright. How do you get back on track after that? Yeah. You have to let it go. That's it. Let it go. Do not allow it to trouble your spirit to the point where you can't get what God has for you in that day. Because God gives us different grace. He says that he gives us grace.
The grace that God gives us today is sufficient for today. What God has for us today is for today. What he has for you tomorrow is for you tomorrow. So don't miss what God has for you today by allowing someone else to take your mind off what God has for you. My third point. Y'all would not believe that I'm almost finished. My third point is don't be wilderness minded. Accept responsibility for the situations that you find yourselves in. And by wilderness minded, I, I go back to the story of the Israelites when they were brought out of Egypt. They, the trip that they were supposed to take was supposed to take 11 days. They made it take 40 years because they could not mind. They were wilderness minded. There was an excuse for every situation, everything that happened. Lord, you weak. You, why? We should just stay in Egypt. You're going to leave us out here to die of thirst. Okay, I'm going to give you water. You gave them water. We ain't got no food. He gave them food. We ain't really be tired of this food. Give me something else. He gave them quail. It's like everything that you need, God provides for you. You must accept what he gives you and be grateful for the things that you have and not for the things that you don't have. the right mindset to get, to get rid of that wilderness minded mindset they could not go and have it the land of milk and honey that's flowing with milk and honey that God had for them and if you know the story you know that the original everyone the original people that came out of Egypt with them died off except Joshua and Caleb right even Moses didn't make it in and he was the one that led them out it's like oh, Jesus you, God may appoint you to do something right. of mighty importance. And if you allow others and their wilderness minded attitude to throw you off track, you won't get your prize. You won't get to get what God has for you. God told you to leave my people for a wilderness honey. Moses let them and their complaining cause him to miss out on the prize at the end that God had. So, when we find ourselves slipping into the negative and ungodly like thinking, what do you need to do? You need to use your Bible emergency numbers. And I got some Bible emergency numbers for you. But you're like, what's the Bible emergency number? It's the scripture, the exact scripture in the Bible that is for the exact situation that you're dealing with. Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Everything that you deal with, no matter what it is, is in the Bible. God gives you a way out of it. He gives you a way to deal with it. Go to his word. You hide in your heart. You read it. Hide in your heart. Meditate upon it. And when it comes, when that situation comes up against you, you be ready to stand and speak it. You can speak it in your spirit or speak it out loud. Sometimes you got to speak it out loud because in your spirit you just not hear it. Sometimes you got to hear what the word says in order for it to germinate and get back into it for you to understand it and take part of it. Okay, so I'm going to give y'all some of my Bible emergency numbers. It says, when you don't feel loved, call Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Everybody at one point in their lives, no matter how many people you surround yourself with, you have felt alone, you felt unloved. And it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that Christ is that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. And you're like, okay, so how much does he love me? You go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He loved you enough to allow his son to die for you. Everybody here that have children, raise your hand, raise your hand. How many of y'all will let y'all child die for somebody else? How many of y'all seriously would be like, okay, I love this person so much. I love this. I love this job, uh, Sister Beverly so much. Say you go down for her. God ain't do with me yet. Come on. He hasn't got me that far yet. But just imagine, if someone loves you enough to let their son, their only son, yeah. the son is the one that carries on the, the line. He carries on the, the name. Yeah. Yeah. To let your son 
die for us, that's a love that we can't even fathom. We say it, that's, we, we quote John 3, 16 all the time. But how many of us really think about it and believe it and can actually understand it? It's so mind-blowing. When you really get into it, it's like, wait, he died for me. He, he literally died for me. He came and was made flesh. And he died. And if you saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, did you see what they did to him? Yes. Jesus. And that's just a rendition. We don't know exactly what happened, but if that, if that's just the, what they can visually imagine, I'm thinking it's, Lord, you went through that for me? For little old me? That I don't, I, I don't deserve it. But thank you. Thank you, Lord. When you're facing danger, call on Psalms 91. When people have failed you, call on Psalms 27. And this one I'm gonna read because it's it's it's, it's one that it, when you read it and you listen to it and you, you think about it, it's like, oh, okay. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my it, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even when I even then will I be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord: this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his, I'm sorry, at his sacred tent, I will sacrifice the shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says to you, seek his face. Your, your face, Lord, will I seek. I do, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, shouting malicious accusations. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27. That's when you think everybody else has failed you. The Lord is always there. Nobody else will be there for you. Everybody else will rise up against you and say this, say that. It's like, no. You may say whatever you wish to say about me. You can do whatever you think you think you need to do to me. But I know that in spite of everything, God got my back. God is standing with me. He will stand firm with me and fight my battles for me. Because it's not, the battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. And when you cast your battle, cast your cares and worries on the Lord, he will fight those battles for you. Just stand still and let him. You got to make sure that you let him. Don't be trying to, don't try to fight the battle for God. You, you're saying, I'm casting my battle, I'm casting my cares on the Lord. He's going to fight my battles. But then at the same time, you're trying to put your hand in and be like, uh, what is it? They call it, uh, I know y'all seen a little video where you see the two kids fighting, and the next thing you know, another one comes in, huh? Don't try and get your licks in. The Lord has it. He don't need you to get a lick in here and there. Kick somebody. Got it. <laughs> Another one of our emergency numbers is when you don't understand what God is doing, call on Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. We don't have to understand what God is doing. We just have to accept that he has a plan and a call for our life. And accept and do what he tells you to do. When 
God says go, go. When you hesitate, you miss out on what he has for you. That's the plain and simple. When you don't understand what God is doing, just still know that he has worked it out and he's working for you. And for my youth, my youth, my young ladies, my young men, when you don't feel like you fit in or look like everyone else, go to Psalms 139, verse 13 through 16. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Amen. Amen. When you feel like you don't look like everybody else, when you feel as if you don't fit in with everyone else, praise God because he made you to be you. He didn't make you to be everyone else. He made you Oh, 